We're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since, and are now searching for a place to call home somewhere soon. Subscribe and join the ride. Continuing our journey down Mexico's wildly beautiful Baja Peninsula, eating all the treats, getting to know the locals, discovering royal roads, and diving into the Baja Way. Today, we find ourselves camped just a few bays south of Loreto, where we were only supposed to spend one night. But as with most great spots, we can't ever seem to get ourselves to leave. That is, until we were told about and read stories of bandits and amphibious thieves from campers of years gone by. Now, will that make us feel any differently about being here? We just came back from what might possibly be the best paddle boarding experience of our lives. Wait till you see. Whoa, babes. Your double grand slam breakfast burrito. Perfect, because I just found a dinner knife by the bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> bon appetit. Tell them what we did this morning. We went paddle boarding. It was a really calm morning and glassy, and we could just like see way down. It was something else. Probably 20 feet of visibility, maybe 30. So amazing. We saw stingrays and schools of fish, like thousands of little Nemo fish. Really colorful, vibrant purple fish. Yeah, it was so beautiful. That was our first time actually really seeing marine life under there. Special. Oh, and we saw a blue-footed booby. And we got way closer than I would have ever expected to be able to get to him. You see his little blue feet? It's so cute. I'm just looking at your blue feet. <laughs> Not your boobies, just your feet. <laughs> ready for this glamour shot? Ready. Oh yeah. Mm. Burritos taste better by the feet, don't they? And you left the egg gooey, which is my favorite. It's like dipping sauce for the chip. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys some of the seashells you can find out here. Look at the size of some of our findings. No wonder those scallops that Drew bought from the fishermen were ginormous. Just for size, look at that. Also, this guy's crazy eyes. <sighs> a little trick for camping by the sand. Keep a bucket of ocean water, so then you can rinse off. Did that really go through your shoe? Yeah, all the way. I was just trying to go pee. See if I can get a grip on from this side and pull it out. It's no joke. I don't wanna rip my top, oh, there it is. It's a broken off part of the thorn. Look at that. Quick example of why foam flip-flops are actually pretty dangerous out here. Look at the size of those things. We're gonna go check on our friend. I'm gonna pop Lucky Blue off, and then we're gonna go for a ride to this epic canyon that's supposed to be right in these back hills called Mesquite Canyon. We'll see you guys once we're on Lucky Blue. I also want to make sure and say how grateful we've been to have a motorcycle with us in Baja. A lot of the roads out here are 4x4, sandy, dirty, dusty, rutted, rocky roads, and Spirit is not made for those. But the fact that we have a motorcycle helps us to not be limited by our van, because this is a playground for people with off-road vehicles. What a mess. Look how muddy this is. Good thing we held our speed through that because I would not want to be slipping and sliding if we got stuck in there trying to shovel out and get all spirit out. Look how muddy those tires are. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Adventure? That's right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying right to. Isn't that right, Mr. Adventure? That's the kid's meow. He's I don't just... want to say that. <laughs> no. Isn't that right, Mr. Adventure? There's so many people out here in groups bugging around, riding motorcycles, exploring the beaches, because they're just miles of all kinds of off-road paths. Even our friends in the last episode that took us out to the island, they competed last year in the Baja 1000, and they said it was an amazing experience. Every year, which I didn't know, they replot the course all around between Ensenada and La Paz. And sometimes it's a loop, sometimes it goes all the way down the peninsula. It was really fascinating to hear their stories. Doing our paddleboard in there while we leave spirit behind for a little bit. Good thing we don't have to do this every time. Good thing we got the longer sprinter van. Whoa. 
then we're in. Good job. Okay, great. Now that we got that over with, from here, we hopped on Lucky Blue with our hiking gear in tow, making a pit stop only to see if our blue-footed friend was still perched on that same rock, questionably crippled or questionably just happy to be on that rock. He's still there? The booby is still there. Oh my. Let's go. Hold on, this is some soft sand. We get a little wiggly. Maybe he cut his foot on the rock. His blue little foot. I don't know. I feel like he more so broke his when? ankle or something. Oh, really feel like we should go tell the marina now. We can. Okay, but here, we'll see if we can zoom in on him for you. We were both like, is that a blue footed booby? Because we heard that you can see them out here in the national park. It's like a national park on these islands or in the bay or somewhere off the coast here. Donde esta tu familia? You just looking for your buddy? He's such an amazing creature. I just want to say, how do you describe the symptoms of the blue-footed booby right now to the people at the marina? He's sitting perched on a rock. Wow. That's what blue-footed boobies do. He looks out. He does. Maybe he's fine. <laughs> I mean, he looks great. But why is he letting us hang out? Or why has he been there for... Eight hours. Uh, yeah. Before heading straight to the marina, where we really didn't know where to go or what to say, we decided to ask one of the resident snowbirds if they had any advice or thoughts about our blueby. Sorry to bother you. There's a blue-footed booby on the rock over there. Yeah. And it's been sitting there since 8 a.m. We were gonna go tell the marina. We were like, does that mean he's injured or? I don't know how close to get, but we weren't trying to spook him. Yeah, it's hard to say, you know, they take care of themselves and really a lot of times, you know, if they're injured or whatever, there's there's nobody here that's gonna come rescue it. And nobody at the marina really does something no, like that. No, there's no one there that would do that. Do you see him on this shore quite often then? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that makes us feel better anyway. Yeah, I don't know what to say. And, Nature's gonna take its course. Okay. You guys camped here somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, just down there. At the end. Is it alright to leave the van for a little bit or? Yeah, um, how far down are you? We're only two past the last one, like. The long beach. Well, I guess the they're all past. Kind of... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a different neighborhood, you know. They, banditos will come in from the, from the Arroyo and sneak okay. in there and just, they're not, they don't threaten people, but they'll yeah. take advantage if they see something they want. Sure. So, okay. Will they break into something or? You never know. Hopefully not. Yeah. Yeah, there's okay. no guarantees. Okay. Well, that didn't make us feel very good. Now what? Not sure you all were able to hear everything that our new friend was saying, but basically he's seen quite a few blue-footed boobies out here and they basically take care of themselves. Unfortunately, there is nobody at the marina to help with animal rescue, he said. We'll just have to kind of check up on our little blue-footed friend. And also he said that the banditos will come by to this part of the neighborhood because as you saw us come in on another like side trail that allows for secondary access, to this spot and to all the other spots down in that direction. So he said to probably not leave your van. He said they're primarily opportunistic, looking for things that are easy to grab and just throw in their truck and head out. We have no idea how frequent that is, but we were kind of forewarned on iOverlander. Most of our camping spots in Baja either come from our friends' recommendations or the iOverlander app. And once in a while we get really creative, follow satellite imagery or a long dusty trail out in the middle of nowhere. Those are some of the best ones. Yes. But we always like to make sure we feel safe and that we're in a good situation first and foremost. After reading specifically about this beach, there's a lot of reviews talking about how amazing it is, how they loved and felt like the long-term snowbirds who were here were respectful, which I can definitely vouch for. However, there's a couple of reviews talking about some shady things that have happened here, especially people who came for hiking or just to enjoy themselves, their cars got broken into. They're basically taking anything that's opportunistic. Mm, doesn't always make us feel the best. Certainly doesn't. Even in the beautiful places. So I think we're just gonna go park our van in a secured lot, then take Lucky Blue 
to our hike. It's a good choice. Before the sun sets because now it's like almost three o'clock in the afternoon. Sounds about right. I know. And we even were awake for sunrise this morning. It's just the days aren't long enough for us. They just get away from us. They do. All right. We've got the puck locks on the back doors, which I would show you, but... And I'm going to put our master lock on our locker here. <sighs> Tricky part is getting everything ready to drive with the paddleboard in here. Uh. All surfaces are cleared. Just as we were saying how great it is to have a motorcycle in Baja too, you know? Like actually really sucks that you can't feel safe leaving your van behind for even like an hour or two. <sighs> it just kind of sticks in the back of your mind. So either staying in campgrounds or yeah, or staying with your van all the time or like us going to move to a secure public parking lot, like. Certainly takes its toll. We're having a big problem. Don't touch anything. Try pushing it. Curtain is stuck in the slider door and now we can't open our door. This is one of those moments you just. Oh. Press that button. I can't. I know, I can't even do anything from this side. But it's not doing it. You're gonna have to crawl through and try pressing on the door. Body check the door outward. Hmm. Now what? See if you can pull that curtain through. Caught on the hinge. Wait, but hold on, push the door out because my fingers are caught. Are you free? There, okay. Oh my gosh. Our poor curtain. Oh jeez. So what happens when we leave it like hanging halfway? And then we go to open the slider because we want that view and when it gets pushed and caught back in the mechanism oh. and the hook, it's a curtain eater. <laughs> and my mom did such a nice job repairing that for us last year. We might need a new one. So much work. <laughs> Why don't we just hang out at the beach? <laughs> we stay with our van, we're good. But now we've already gone through all of this. So we had a nice neighbor allow us to park in front of his campsite. He'll keep an eye on it. He's been coming down here for 12 years. So we feel much, much better about this. Oh, it's even better than the marina. That way we can come back and be camping right here on the shores. <laughs> Found it. Okay, so looking back, we may have been a little paranoid, but after reading what we read and being told what was said, plus we are in Mexico and 2020 did just happen. So can you blame us? All I have to say is, this hike better be worth it. Spoiler alert, it was. I think it's just for animals, right? Oh, definitely would need high clearance. Or, or two wheels. There's a car up there. I hail from Pennsylvania. We get called a day here. Thank you, Two Wheels, for taking us this far. Huh. That was much better than having to walk that mile plus from the gate. Let's go. Do you smell that? That's the mesquite. <laughs> <laughs> the mesquite barbecue. Of a mesquite, mesquite canyon. canyon. <laughs> Drew and I were just saying that we already feel better knowing that we left our van with our new friend there. In a place that's secure, that's not taking away our mental thoughts, and that way we can just enjoy this hike. I'm already excited that we're here. <laughs> the nice Colorado guy that we met, he told us to come down this way, right? He said we'll look into it. To I actually left. don't know if it's a loop. He just said go the high route up. Let's walk in here for a second though, just so we get the perspective of when we're looking at it from above. Fair enough. It almost looks like a snowman. <laughs> oh, that's great. Looks so pretty through there. Oh, and look, hieroglyphics. <laughs> I don't think those are very ancient. That guy was just like me back in the day. You mean that guy? Mm, maybe we wouldn't mind so much if we had to wade through some water. It is like 90 degrees out or something. It's hot and sunny and very refreshing. All right, to the high road. Look at those colors. Just want to point out how white this tree is. Look at that. 
I wonder if the blue-footed booby poops blue. And that's why his feet are blue. Steps in it. If he eats those little violet fish down in the sea, then yes. <laughs> Whoa. As the sun's setting, you can see the curvature of the shadow of the opposite wall on this right wall. Story time, now that you guys have seen down into the canyon. Our friend who we parked in front of told us that the banditos come around once or twice a year and you have no clue when they might show up. One time they came up amphibious style and stole a boat, which is really sad to hear. The other time in the 12 years he's been coming, they said they ransacked his camper when he was away and basically cleared it out. I felt really bad for him. Maybe. Just, I guess, the way life goes here in Mexico sometimes. But I think the odds of him coming in 12 years and having one thing doesn't depreciate the fact that he loves the beauty of this country. Yeah. And posting up on the coastline like that. Says a lot. He sure still does. keeps coming. Yep. Yeah. Seemed like a happy dude. Yeah. Look at these little pools. They come all the way up from the mountains here and flow into the deeper canyon over here. How neat. This hike would be entirely different if we were hiking down in that canyon. But it's pretty awesome to be above just taking it all in. Yeah, I'm loving this. I'm really wow. happy we did this. This is a gem in Mexico. Super hidden, super remote. Yeah, like a mixture of Sedona and the yeah. wave. Antelope Canyon. Yeah, exactly. I got this one for you, babes. Stop. You got what you need? Bananas. Bananas. <laughs> right back where we started, babe. Full circle. Look at that moon. So beautiful. There's the bonfire crew. Tonight's not only a full moon, it's also fish taco night. Oh yeah. It's white sea bass caught by a fisherman right on the bay. Homemade salsa. Thank you. Ooh, I'm excited. Date night. By candlelight. And look, by the light of the full moon. Whoa. My hand looks like the moon. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could go like this. That's a masterpiece right there, babe. Mm. You know what time it is. Hmm? He just had his morning coffee. It's another beautiful morning here. Time to go check on our blue-footed friend. I'm sort of hoping he's not there because that means that he's healed enough to move. So, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> no words needed. <laughs> Got three little seeds right here. Leslie, we want you to know that we saved three seeds from our last tangelo. <laughs> They're like no other orange on this planet. They're so soft and sweet without being bitter. And I can't wait to plant these seeds one day on our future property. Me too. All right. Dolphin. My, I wonder what happened. Well, we no longer see our blue footed friend on the rock anymore, which is good, I think. But we noticed a bunch of vultures sitting on the shore, which is concerning. But we think that maybe they just had their breakfast. So tiny. Wow, look at that. Oh, my. Our 
hiding spot for our transportation device. I love how concerned we were yesterday <laughs> about leaving our van behind and, you know. I hid the paddle somewhere else. Ooh, good thinking. That way they couldn't get away quickly. We could have <laughs> swam after them and caught them. Those tricky banditos. Camping spot, paddling spot, hiking spot. Look at that. It's a donut hole. <laughs> it is. Let's go up the heart trail to the peak. So grateful there's a hiking trail right from our campground. It looks pretty well done. Yeah, it really does. Right down there is where we're camped. What a bay. What a bay. What a day. <laughs> yeah, what a day. We're almost to the peak. We're going to the top and the views keep getting better. There's a lot of poop on this rock. But I guess that's what happens. When you get a 360 degree view. What better place to poop? This view's amazing. That down there is the canyon where we were yesterday. And over here is the marina. Puerto Escondido. This calls for a celebration. <laughs> Thanks, babes. On our way up here, we were saying it must have taken a lot of work to build this trail. And I bet the people who come here every year, because this is the spot where, what are winter people called? I think they call them snow gringos down here. <laughs> like to spend their winters. But I bet you they all started to pitch in at some point and finish this whole trail system. Well done, good work. My hat's off to you. <laughs> we're back and the sun is out. It's time for us to charge up the Jackery before we move on to our next camping spot because while we're here we have the space to sprawl out and we can charge back up our solar powered portable generator which we use as a supplemental power source when our van just isn't getting the juice that it needs. Especially on these short days where they end early we just need a lot of extra power in the evening hours. He looks so good on that beach. He does. And our Jackery solar panel stores conveniently under our mattress. I love how the solar panels have specific little zipper compartments and Velcro straps. And Jackery has a whole plethora of different sizes. Yeah. So whether you're just looking to take one out for a weekend trip. Or have it in emergency situations for your house, on your boat. So be sure to check out our link below and see if there's a Jackery to help fit your needs because ours comes in handy more times than we would have ever imagined. And it's easy to store and take anywhere. It is, especially if you have more than a van, you know what I mean? But I mean. And we have a van and it works great. Her van looks like a good time back there. <laughs> it is. Drew's next door talking to our new neighbor, Michael, who's been coming here for 20 years, gets settled in. It's his first night back, and he was telling us that this might be the last year of Rattlesnake Beach, which in fact was named after the fact that there are rattlesnakes here, which luckily we have not yet seen. But apparently this property was purchased to develop into some sort of housing plots, which is such a shame. So we feel especially lucky that we got to enjoy it this year but I wanted to show you some more treasures that I found on this beach because they're just too exciting not to share with you. Are there any other sea glass lovers out there? This has to be the most incredible piece of sea glass I have ever found. It's like a crystal. Look at how thick that is. What do you think it was? Treasures that will one day be turned into gifts and jewelry of some sort. So we've been running a little low on water and we got an extra six gallons here. So let's see if we can get this in here so that babe can take a shower. Whoa, this is tricky. This is really tricky. Oh my gosh. Oh, is it Look here. What are you doing? <laughs> There's an air valve. Oh, is it supposed to come all the way out? I'm dripping, hold on. <laughs> this is our first time. First time for everything. Ah, there we go. There we go. Oops, I don't need to take it out, but yes, there's air in it. Round two. Round two. Oh, you're so strong. Ah. Uh oh, we need our other funnel. This is what we need. That funnel could do anything. Got it. This could be a tsunami. Uh. Whoa. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh my gosh, it's so high. <laughs> Good thing you're strong. Good thing I'm tall. Than me. Whoa! There's a fly on my leg. Ah! Slow down! <laughs> it's happening. 
This is great. a lot of work. He does it all. <laughs> it's like I've got a third arm. <laughs> oh, it's good. Thank goodness this tank got a bit lighter. That's good stuff. So far our journey down Baja has been a lot about feeling our fears, practicing sound decision making skills, and choosing to embrace the adventure every chance we get. And we hope you'll join us back here for the next chapter as our Baja Bound series continues and beyond. I've come to find out here on the road So many men with talent Only few have the souls